Flux context just fixed AI image generation, better face consistency, smarter edits, and total creative control, all from a single prompt. ChatGPT struggled with this, but Flux have absolutely nailed it with this new context AI model, and is able to generate results for you incredibly quickly, and it costs around four cents per image that you generate. This model is also now multimodal, so it's able to understand the text that you put in and the ability to upload reference images, so it knows what it needs to look for and how it's going to do that translation onto another image that we've got. This means that you can edit, direct and completely reframe like you're in your own studio. Want to apply a crayon layer to an image? Done. Want to do an animated version? Done. Want to do a avatar version instead? Done. Need a new professional headshot, new lighting, new outfits? We can do that as well. And I'm going to show you exactly how to use this model with Replicate and at the end, how you can run it with an API using NA10. So as we can see here, we've got all of the details around it. So as that consistency, we've got that input image here of that individual. We've then removed the image in front of her face. We've said, okay, great. Now let's get us into a location so that we can do that, which is one of the models. And now we're going to say, let's change the context. We're going to put it all in snow. There's lots of details here. They've got lots of examples. I'm not going to run through them now, but I'll include the link below so you can get access to it. You can use it across lots of different environments. We're going to be using with Replicate today. So let's come across to Replicate. We're then going to come into where we've got our image models. They've got lots and lots of different ones here that you can choose from. I'll just scroll down quickly. But if we come across, we've actually got it ready to go here, which is all of the context apps. So there's 11 in total. So we've got different ones, different ones here around being a Renaissance painting. We've got the ability to have multiple images put together to get an output, as we can see with these two. We've got the ability to remove text, put it into a cartoon. We've got that ability, again, to compare and combine the two images. We can put you in iconic locations, impossible scenarios, professional headshots, portrait series. We can change hairstyles, haircuts if we want to. We're able to restore images, add some filter and add depth of field so let's come across to a few examples i've got ready to go this is one where we're restoring maybe an old image that you've got a family member's got or you could sell this as a service what we do is apply it over to the top and as you can see here as i reveal this it brings it to life exactly like it would have been in that day this is fantastic quality and most importantly when it comes to the ai image generation the consistency of the characters matches almost perfectly to the ones that we had on the left hand side here so that's absolutely fantastic and this has only cost us 4p per image and we're able to get it back in 6.8 seconds so incredibly quick the next one here is we can come down and we can combine two images so imagine we've got a coca-cola bottle on the left hand side and we've got that individual that we want to have holding it as we can see here all we did was upload those two images and then came to the top and gave it the prompt saying, please have it, so the lady is holding the can of drink in her right hand. That's all we needed to do. It was able to do the rest. To show you how to do this, all you would need to do is come and upload a file. So for example, here, we could say there's this chap that's running. We could also replace the Coca-Cola can. We could say that we're going to add in where we've got one around a jacket that we've just found. All of these images are coming from Unsplash, so they're completely copyright free. I'll include the link below if you want to get access to the ones here. It's a really good website if you're looking for something to test on. Let's come back across though. We're going to come up to the top and we'll say, please have the runner wearing the jacket so he isn't topless. We'll be able to send this off. That's all we need to do. Now it's got that ability, like we mentioned a bit earlier, because it's multimodal. It's analyzed both of the images. It's analyzed that text prompts that we've given it. And now it's going to come back with that response. We'll see exactly what it looks like. And this one's going to cost us eight cents per image. We've also got the seed here. So if we wanted it to be more consistent, we could do that as well. And there we go. Able to put that top on him incredibly quickly, incredibly easily. And it's not 100% perfect, but it's, I would say, very, very close for what we would want. If we come across, we'll be able to see here that we're able to change haircuts. So in this style, we've got, for example, just changing the hair color blue, but they've got so many different options that you can do. We've got random, straight, curly, 
For example, if we were to come down and do a top knot, we want the hair color to be blonde. We're saying it's a male, we we're able to do run. It's going to go off and generate that image for us. This is the easiest way to get the outputs that you're looking for. We're going to show you the API in a little second. And as we see here, it's come back and we've got that response ready to go. But critically, that image looks incredibly similar to the source image. So it's keeping that character consistency. If we come across, we're also able to impose different parts of different images into each other. So for example, here, we had the image that you can see on the left-hand side, which was all around this pool. So we wanted it to be poolside. And then we gave it this second image here, which is all around that rubber ring. We then gave it the prompt up the top here, which says, please put the rubber ring into the pool from image one with the palm trees. So it looks absolutely fantastic. And I think it looks amazing. We've got it really good there. It's also got some reflections, which is incredibly hard for AI to be able to do. So it's great to see that it's able to do that. If we come a few more examples, we're also able to do those professional headshots. So as you can see here, we have an image on the lady, more casual, and we've gone through and got an excellent output on the right. All we can do is come down the bottom. We could change the background. So we could say that we want it to be an office background. We'll do run. It's going to redo that image for us and we're going to get it back in under that 10 seconds and you've got the seed there if you want to do con some consistency around the output that you're looking for so it should come back now and there we go it looks absolutely fantastic i'm going to show you now how that compares to chat gpt so i put the exact same prompt across to chat gpt with an image of me i said please come up with a professional headshot image and it came back with this again it's not 100% perfect. I'd say ChatGPT is 80% of the way there. The skin looks very different. It's really smooth. The eyes look distorted. So that's where we're starting to see Flux and their context new image model be miles ahead compared to the other ones. It's also changed some of the context. So it's got a button here, which it didn't have in the first one here. So it's changing the output. If we come back across to Flux context, we can also come across and we can add three images in here. And as you can see, when we give it the prompt, it's able to give the output by combining those three images together so that we can get it the way we want it. If we come across again, we can do some characters. So I gave it the input that you can see on the left-hand side here, and then I'll put the four outputs that we got over the top now so that you can see how from one image and giving it a prompt, we're able to give those different stylized outputs. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. To think that we could use this in a variety of use cases around doing some animation, doing some teaching and coaching for some, maybe some younger individuals, we'd be able to use these incredibly quickly and with the consistency. Now, if you want to be able to use the API, we've got it ready to go in the school community. Make sure to come across. You'll get access to all of this for free as part of your seven day free trial. You just need to come down to where we've got the AI image generation. We'll see that we've got all of the blueprints here ready to go. All you need to do is download them, come across to a new environment, three dots, import from file, and then just upload the one that you want to work with. So for example, here, this is the one that we've got the face to many context, which is exactly the same as the model that we had here, which is where you're able to upload an image of maybe yourself. And you can get a couple of different outputs in that stylized version. Maybe it's Disney, Halloween, whatever it is to get the output you're looking for. So how do we build this from scratch? Well, let's come across here. We're going to get rid of all of this apart from the start. And then we're going to keep our on-form submission just so that we get the data in nice and easy. We're using the on-form submission, but you can come through if you wanted to and do a chat trigger node. This would enable you to then come down the bottom, open up the chat and send a response through instead that way. We're going to keep it a bit more structured. So maybe you're doing this as a SaaS offering. You'd be able to set it up nice and easy. We've got it here where we've got all of the different options ready to go that are available for how you want that image to be stylized. We've then also said what persona you want it to be. So we've added all of the different options in there. And critically, we've got the option here to be able to upload an image file. In one of the other versions, we did have actually a basic LLM that once you've submitted maybe a prompt in your image, it would go through and do the rest for you. So there's different ways that you'd be able to set this up. If we come back across, we're going to come out of here. We're going to do extract from file because we need a base 64 string so that we can convert it and be able to store it in our platform here, which is going to be IMGBB 
for that short-term storage and being able to access the images. Let's come back across though. What we're going to do is get some test data going through. So we're going to come into here. We're going to say that we want our style to be maybe the Simpsons, the persona, we want it to be random. We're going to upload an image. So there we go, all uploaded. We can send this off. We'll come back across. And as we can see here, we've got that image file ready to go and use a bit later on. If we come across to schema, we'll also see that we've got that style and that persona ready to go for our request a bit later. What we're going to need to do next is a HTTP request. And this is so that we can send the data off into our storage location, which is IMGBB. I'll include the curl request in the community. What we're doing down here is going to copy all of this. We're going to come back across and then we're going to come into here and import curl. There we go. We're going to need to have an expiration date. You can change that and you're going to need your API key. To do that, make sure to come across. You're going to be able to set an API key up. I've got one ready to go. So we're going to, we're going to copy this, come back across and paste in there. We're going to need to come down and we're going to need to change this in a second. So to do that, we'll just execute the previous step, which is changing it from a binary file into a base 64 output. The reason we've not got an output is just because we need to change this binary input field to make sure it matches up with what we've got on our form. So there we go. We've got that response back. Now, if we come down the bottom, we'll be able to delete all of this. We're going to pull the data across and then we can do execute step and it's going to upload it into our environment so that we can use it just for this process as it goes through and then it will delete it after a little while so it's not stored in the long term. We're going to come back across though. We're going to do save. The next part, we're going to need another HTTP request because we're going to be sending our request off to replicate. So I'm just going to rename this. So it's going to be store image in I, IMGBB. And then we'll open our one up here. I'm just going to say generate image. Now we can come back across to our environment. We'll come to where it's got API. We're going to come down to HTTP. We're going to copy this, come back across, import curl, paste in there, and it will load it up ready to go. We need our API key, so we're going to come back across to our environment, come down to where we've got API tokens. I generated one a bit earlier, so I'm going to copy this and then paste across in here. So we'll paste in there. Now we'll be able to do a space. Come down, we're going to change this to expression, open this up. We've got the curl request ready to go in the community, which has a few changes. So I've just pasted that across. And as you can see here, we've now got it ready to go for that style, persona, number of images, and that input image. To find this, we're going to get rid of here. We're going to pull across that URL from our IMGBB version before. And if you want to change the style, all you need to do is get rid of this. And then we're going to pull across where we've got style and you'll be able to do exactly the same for persona. And one of the features I love about NA10 is on the right hand side, you'll see exactly what that HTTP request is going to be sending off for our replicate environment. If I do execute step, this is going to go off. It's going to take under 10 seconds to be able to generate the four images that we want and bring them back to us so that we can use them in the next stage. And there we go, all ready to go. So we've now got one, two, three, four outputs that we can use. If we do save, we're then going to come into here and we're going to do split out. That's because we want to come to the left hand side, put across the output, execute the step. And now we've got each one going through versus them in an array. So you'd have to do all in one step. What we're going to do next is add a code module in here because we're going to need to add some information. And we're going to paste in here from the community. We'll do execute step. And now it's going to return that PNG and the index for that number. We're going to do a HTTP request. We're going to put across that output, do execute step. We should get a file that comes back. There we go. So as we can see here, we've got all of the different images being returned. I'll make sure to put them nice and big on screen so you've got access to them. And if we come out of here, we've just got the last step, which is about storing all of these different files. So I'm going to do Google and then Drive just to upload them into my Google Drive. We'll come into here. We're going to do upload a file. We're then going to give it a file name. So in here, we're going to do request. We're then going to need to add in our ID. So we're going to come down to generate image, put across the ID, and then we're going to come to the end and paste in here the index. So now it would be one 
from our code module a bit earlier on or that HTTP request that's been pulled through. So now if we do test step, it will go up and save all of those different files into our Google Drive so that we can use them in the future. That's how quick and easy it is to get set up. And again, if you want to get access to any of the resources we run through today, make sure to come across to the community. They're all ready to go, as well as our masterclass around AI image generation, which walks you through how to get those best outputs possible using a lot of the AI models that are out there at the moment. Stay tuned for more around AI agents, automation, and have a great day.